Hi, I'm Molly Hayes, the Government Affairs Task Force Chair for the Leawood Chamber of Commerce. This interview is being conducted on behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy Council, comprised of the Chambers of Commerce in Johnson County and the Greater Kansas City Chamber. Jointly, we host a website, votejoco.com, a nonpartisan site where voters can learn more about candidates for public office. Many of the candidates we will be interviewing have completed a candidate questionnaire that can also be found on votejoco.com. Today, we have with us current Representative Jan Kessinger, candidate for the Kansas House of Representatives in the 20th District, covering parts of Overland Park and Leewood. Thank you, Jan, for joining us today with our to share with our chamber members and visitors to votejoco.com more about you and what your priorities will be if elected, re-elected. We want to start today's conversation by spending three to four minutes with you telling us a little bit more about you, why you chose to run for re-election of the Kansas House. Jan, go ahead. Thank you, Molly. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. Uh, I am state representative in House District 20, and I was first elected in 2016. I serve on the Federal and State Affairs Committee, the Commerce, Labor, and Economic Development Committee, uh, the Transportation and Public Safety Budget Committee, and I'm also chair of the Johnson County Delegation. Uh, since 2017, when I was first uh, serving, uh, we've been able to reverse the fiscally irresponsible uh, ground back tax experiment. We put 330,000 corporations back onto the tax rolls. We've been able to fully fund education. We reinstated fully funding on CAPERS. Uh, we reduced reckless borrowing from the Department of Transportation and we've invested more in infrastructure. You'll see that on Highway 69 as we widen it to uh, six lanes. And I also have the highest lifetime score of any current serving uh, Johnson County Legislature on the uh, Overland Park Chamber score, scorecard. Uh, I've been named by three different governors to state boards, including the Kansas Gaming and Racing Commission by Governor Brownback, the Governor's Council on Travel and Tourism by Governor Collier, and the Kansas State Use Committee that uh, works with products and services provided by the blind or the disabled. Uh, that was appointed by Governor Kelly. And I'm a member of the Johnson County Education Research uh, Triangle Authority Board of Directors. Uh, I also serve on an intra-agency task force on transitional age youth and a judicial system. I'm an active member of the United Methodist Church of the Resurrection, Congregational Care Minister volunteer there. I serve on the church council and also do mission work, including a trip to South Africa. My business experience includes 18 years uh, with the business press and 25 or 27 years uh, consulting with my own uh, consulting company, management and sales consulting, working with Fortune 500 companies, uh, but also mom and pop operations. I've worked in North America, throughout Central America, Europe, and uh, I've worked with 37 different state uh, lotteries and generating record sales. I have an MBA from Rockhurst University. I also did graduate studies in business at Pepperdine, and I've got a journalism degree from the University of Kansas. So as I matured, which is another way of saying as I got older, I was thinking about the world that I would leave behind and I ran because I wanted to leave a legacy for my grandchildren. Uh, I wanted to be able to serve to make a purpose and to restore fiscal responsibility, to invest fully in education, invest in the infrastructure, create a strong Kansas economy and provide responsive leadership. So I looked in the mirror and I remember the day very well. And I said, somebody's got to do something. And then I realized that I was that somebody to do something. Uh, for me, being a state representative is a full-time job. I gave up most of my consulting work because I genuinely care about our community, not ideology. I love being a representative for House District 20, and I look forward to serving another term as your state representative. The next few questions will focus on some key business issues that chamber members have told us are important to them. If you could spend approximately two minutes responding to these, that will allow us time at the end for you to make a closing statement. Okay. What do you see as the top three policy issues facing the state of Kansas in the coming year? Sure. Well, number one has to be restoring the economy. The COVID-19 uh, pandemic has just devastated us in ways that we were not prepared for, which I don't know how you could have been prepared for. So restoring the economy is going to be number one. Education and schools uh, is number two, and then infrastructure investment would be number three. 
Okay, thank you. Given the current economic situation, balancing the state budget will undoubtedly be a huge task in the coming year. What specific steps do you feel are key to make this happen? Well, I think the question is not how or where to cut, but let's look for efficiencies and effectiveness. It's not always cutting that's gonna help you balance the budget. Sometimes it's investing where you get a return. Businesses are doing that and the government should also. Uh, we need to invest wisely. I take a look at JSERT, the Johnson County Education Research Triangle. It was formed in 2008. Uh, Johnson County citizens, one month after the stock market uh, collapsed, uh, we voted to raise taxes to fund uh, the JSERT program. The response of that has been over, we're projected to bring in $1.2 billion in 20 year period, about $60 million a year. To me, that's investing wisely. Uh, we also need to be able to take a look at other sources of revenue, such as an internet sales tax, and that's gonna be able to protect our local businesses, the bricks and mortar uh, people who live here, and they have to pay sales tax, whereas right now, so many internet sales are not taxed, and we need to be able to uh, even that playing field. Uh, we also, sports betting is an option. It's not gonna generate a whole lot of money, but it can help create jobs by getting more people going to social environments. Thank you. Can you share with us your views on K-12 education funding in Kansas? Well, in the Commerce Committee, uh, the uh, Secretary of Commerce, David Tolan, came and, and made a presentation uh, on the findings from the Brookings Institute. And I was very, very happy to hear that the Brookings Institute did a study on various states and said the biggest strength that Kansas has is its education system. So with it, since that's our greatest asset, let's continue to invest in it. But it needs to go beyond K-12. Uh, early childhood education will pay off. Uh, you get better results when, when you start early with uh, that early childhood education. But let's also take a look at higher ed because that's going to attract people who are going to stay. It creates that attractive labor pool, uh, it allows us to be able to do more research that attracts business, but at the same time, we need to be able to lower tuition. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to get that new K-12 funding formula without borrowing or raising taxes. It's just a better use of the money that we had. Uh, we've got more money for student mental health. We've got an investment in special ed. Uh, we've also increased the uh, base state ed. Uh, and people say, well, you know, the money needs to go to the classroom or whatever. Well, study shows that Kansas is 96% efficient. That's pretty good. And I'll tell you that Blue Valley and Shawnee Mission Schools are leading the way with that. Business come, for the, come to Kansas for a workforce. Right now, there's going to be a lot of competition among the 50 states to say, who can attract business? And businesses are going to come for the workforce. And families come to a state. They're going to come to Kansas for the schools and students will stay where they feel that they're valued. Thank you. What type of economic development policies will you support to encourage the job growth and business expansion? Well, the first thing we take a look at is make sure that we don't offer incentives without a clawback, because if you don't have a clawback and you give it, somebody an incentive, it's just a giveaway. Uh, Star Bonds has come under a lot of criticism, but it's a very good program if we work it right. We were able to, we extended the sunset um, for another year on Star Bonds. What disappoints me is we had a, a, a bipartisan agreement in the Commerce Committee on Star Bonds, but we weren't able to get it to the floor to have it passed. Uh, but we've got that worked out. Again, both sides working together to uh, make Star Bonds even better. Uh, now, understand that businesses don't come here just for the tax breaks. Uh, they've got to have an educated and motivated workforce. An example I have of that was I was doing a seminar and uh, I met the produce director for Sprouts grocery stores. Uh, from a, He was a head across the country. And I said, hey, you know, you just opened up a couple of stores in Overland Park. How are they doing? And he said, at the same time we opened up the two in Kansas, we opened up two in Tennessee. And I will tell you that the stores in Kansas are much more profitable than the ones in Tennessee. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, the workforce. Uh, so we need to be able to continue to educate and motivate our, our workforce. You've got to have great roads. 
you've got to invest in the infrastructure. Take a look at the uh, intermodal uh, facility out there, Gardner Edgerton. Uh, so we've got rail, you need the great roads, uh, high speed internet. We've got uh, Kansas is an air capital and a lot of that's drone technology. We've done quite a bit out in Salina on that. The Commerce Department, I'm very excited about the work we do with the Commerce Department. For the first time in 34 years, they have a strategic plan, which of course makes my head explode as a business consultant because I'm thinking, how on earth can you operate for 34 years without a strategic plan? Well, they've got one going now. Um, so we need to be able to invest in future industry. Uh, we, we need to become that research and development uh, specialist. People look to Kansas uh, because we are uh, cutting edge. We've got to have that Kansas framework for growth and uh, take a look at what's coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, innovation. Let's take a look and let's not look in the rear view mirror and say, let's go back to where we were. Let's take a look at the opportunities that are here out of necessity uh, that the pandemic has brought to us and let's uh, build on innovation. Uh, so you've got to have the good communities to get people, the schools, the hospitals, the standard of living, and great roads and a wonderful lifestyle and that sense of community. Thank you. What are your views on healthcare policy in Kansas and specifically also Medicaid expansion in Kansas? Well, I voted for Medicaid expansion in 17 and 18. Uh, we fell short uh, and then it died in the Senate. Uh, another big disappointment from this last session was uh, Republican majority leader in the Senate, Jim Denning, uh, worked with the governor's office and we developed a bipartisan plan that was never even heard. And that's a shame because three out of four Kansans support Medicaid expansion. 37 states have uh, embraced it. Nobody's backed out of it. We've got about 150,000 poor people in Kansas uh, who would become covered. These are vulnerable people who would be able to get um, coverage through Medicaid expansion. That would put a stop to using the emergency room as your primary physician. And that, of course, is very expensive, but they can't be turned away at the emergency room. So if a poor person uses the emergency room as the primary physician, uh, they don't have health coverage. They don't have to pay. If they're a no pay, that results in higher hospital costs and higher hospital costs are passed along to the people who do pay. So with expansion, you're gonna have lower hospital costs. You're gonna have a healthier society and that's gonna help lower uh, medical costs too. Uh, we paid out over $4.1 billion in taxes and it's going up as we do this interview. We have paid out $4.1 billion in expansion Medicaid taxes and we have received zero in return. Now the legislation that was put together, we had an out clause that if uh, price went up, we can, we can go get out. Uh, but there was premium uh, requirement for the poor people or for the vulnerable people, the people who qualified for expansion. Uh, so they had some skin in the game too. And also the hospitals were contributing to help defray the cost for Kansas. Uh, so it all goes to that quality of community life I was talking about. Think about it. If a hospital closes, they'll lose their doctor. And when you lose your doctor, well, pretty soon your grocery store, or your schools close too, and everybody abandons it. Uh, you know, I, I think what I was told a long time ago in that society would be judged by the care that we give to the least among us. Um, so look at the people who are nearing their end of life or at the very beginning and, and many of in between. It's caring for the disabled and those who, through no fault of their own, are suffering. We're called to take care of those who cannot help themselves. And I think it's immoral if we're not taking advantage of a program because of politics. Thank you. Um, last question, what do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Hmm. Well, I've got 48 years of business experience. I've been involved in the community. I have a civic experience at both the state and the local levels. Uh, I've had bottom line responsibility in businesses and I offer responsive leadership. I've held over 50 town hall meetings. Uh, I attend community events and I listen to the constituents and I respond to the constituents with emails, calls or in public. Uh, I'm a public servant and I've done this to create a better future 
I didn't realize I was going to be so much of a public servant until I got in and I said, wow, this really is a full-time job. So I, I gave up most of my business and income so that I could do this. Uh, I have four years experience in the legislature um, and I pretty much give it my full time. I have experience with the state agencies I mentioned before, the Racing and Gaming Commission, the Travel and Tourism Council, uh, State Use Committee. Uh, I'm a community leader uh, with the Johnson County Education Research Triangle. Uh, and I've got personal outreach as a, and caregiving as a congregational care minister. Uh, but my goal is to serve, a, to, I want to be able to leave a legacy for a better Kansas. Not, I don't want to push extreme ideological policies that favor just a few people. Thank you. In closing, please spend three to four minutes with a summary and you know, statement for our voters or viewers. Sure. As I mentioned, I, in 2016, I entered a race, I ran and I won uh, so that I could create a better future for Kansas. And the road's still rough. It's gonna require hard work, many hours of work. It's gonna require cooperation from both sides and some creative thinking. I'll work for a balanced budget to build a better Kansas for all and I'll fight for local control as I always have. And as I mentioned, I'll invest in assets uh, that are gonna bring a return. I'll fight for schools. I want to be a true representative of the community, not special interest. I'm committed to the people of Leewood and Overland Park, and I do the hard work. I have a vision, and the vision I have is to be able to create a new Kansas, one that's based on innovation and creativity, equal and fair tax uh, participation. I want to set aside ideology. I want to be able to have a Kansas where we provide health care for the poor and the needy from already available federal dollars. Uh, we're where parents who are strapped financially are gonna be able to afford care for a special needs child. An emergency room will no longer be the primary care physician. I envision a KDOT budget um, to bolster our transportation infrastructure. That's gonna create jobs in construction, grocery stores, restaurants, department stores, movie stores, move, movie theaters, uh, gas stations, and, and all the more. And that's gonna widen our, our state tax base. Uh, I vision, envision where uh, schools are going to be fully and fairly funded, and the students are going to have a healthy appetite for learning. I, I like to envision a school where uh, students are running into it as excited as they are when they run out at the end of the day, where they learn to think and creativity is fostered, where students want to stay and raise their families in Kansas. So my vision is that Kansas politics turns from ideological divisiveness to working together to find the best in each side work towards those common goals instead of working uh, against those whom we perceive to be on the other side. So in Johnson County, we've got many assets and we're not called to be observers. We've got resources that can make life better for everybody. I, I see a legislature where we are focused on making good things happen and let's not worry about who gets the credit and, or finding somebody to get the blame, but. So my vision is at the end of the day, when you say I'm from Kansas, it's with restored pride. So we need leaders who care. We need leaders who support our communities and not those special interests. Somebody who's gonna be able to respond to the needs and concerns of Leewood and Overland Park. I personally respond to constituents and in the legislature, we need to learn to work together. It's easy to attack the other side and it's hard to work together, but you've gotta be able to stand up for right, what is right, and lead with vision, lead with backbone, and to make that vision for a better tomorrow reality. Now, remember in my introduction, I said that somebody needs to do something, and I decided that I was that somebody, and I chose to be the change that I wanted to see. I appreciate your vote on August 4th, and thank you again, Molly, and the Johnson County Public Policy Council, and everybody who's watching. Thank you, Jan, for joining us today and sharing this very important information with voters in this race. As a reminder to everyone watching, more information for all the candidates can be found on votejoco.com. Thank you. Well, 